The Pragmatic Works Asset Management Tool is a great Canvas app built by Pragmatic Works to help your school or organization keep track of all of the assets that you deploy and give out to students or employees. Let's dive right in and take a look at how it works. So here we have the Asset Management Tool. You'll see at the top it says your school asset management and this your school is controlled by a variable in the application that can be set by the app makers. So to start using this, uh, one could go to the assets section to see a list of all of the assets in the organization or in the school filtered by type. So here we have different types of furniture, here we have different types of technology, and within these technology groups and these furniture groups, we have different types of assets, such as for technology, we have projectors, cables, Chromebooks, laptops, so on and so forth. In order to take a look at all of your assets, you can scroll through and see all of the projectors. If you wanna see all the cables, you click on the network cable filter and so on and so forth. We can click through and see all of the different assets that we have underneath each asset type. With laptops, if we scroll down, we can see we have some Dells, some Apples, and some Lenovo's. And in this gallery down below, you'll also see a snapshot of how many items there are, how many are currently available, and how many are currently assigned. In order to see a list of all of the currently available assets, you can click these buttons inside the gallery. So if I want to see all of the currently available Lenovo's, I can click this currently available button and it will take me to a screen filtered by only the items that are available. To the right, I will also see a history of that item and who it's been assigned to and when and what is the current condition of the item. In order to assign this item, I can click this icon in the gallery and I can decide who is this being assigned to, when is it assigned, what is the current condition. This will automatically default to the condition in which the item was returned and does it require return or not? Since this is a laptop being assigned to a student, we're gonna say yes, it does require return. And here we can also add a picture at the time of assignment. Click Submit, and now you'll see that item 1035 drops off and it's no longer available to be assigned out to users. You can also switch this filter here to look at just the unavailable items, and we can see a history for each item. For that one that I just assigned, you'll see that I am not able to assign this right now because it is currently assigned to ACE. We'll see in the history, it was assigned to ACE on this date in this condition, and it's still in possession by ACE. Going back to the home screen, we can also return our items. So if I am a teacher and I, you know, it's the last day of school and I'm scrambling to get all my laptops back from students, I can go to this return an item screen and there's a couple different ways to filter down these assets. I can either filter down by the type of asset. If my entire class has XPS 17s, I can filter by XPS 17, and I can see a list of all of those items here. In my sample data, you'll see that I don't really have any. Or I can say, who is this item assigned to? I can go down to ACE, and I can see that ACE currently has the Legion 7i. In order to return this item, I can click this icon right here, and my form will be most of the way filled out. All that I have to do is select the condition in which ACE is returning this item. We'll say that ACE uh, lightly used this, and I can take a picture of it at the time of return as well. Once I've got that, I can click Submit, and it's no longer a part of this gallery because ACE no longer has it. Additionally, if I don't wanna use these filters, what I can do is I can click this Scan an Item button, and this will take me to the scan an item page. You can also navigate there from the menu bar in the top left and go to scan an item. Because I'm using this application in the web, there's currently no way to use a barcode scanner in the web. This would be a feature just to use on tablets or mobile devices such as a cell phone. But because this app is currently in dev mode, I can also simulate a scan to see how that action would perform. So once I click that simulate scan button, you'll see that when you scan a barcode, you'll have a picture of the item, the name, the serial number, you can make sure that matches. Um, we can see a link to the product documentation. And for this item, we can see the history of it as well. Let's say I'm a teacher and I find this product in the middle of the hallway, I can simply scan it. And at the top, I'll know exactly who has that item. If this item is available to be assigned, I can also click assign this MacBook, 
and I can assign it to any particular person, say it re requires return and submit it. And from a user's perspective, that is pretty much it. Uh, next, I'll go into how to use this app as an administrator if you are one. If I go up to the hamburger menu in the top left, you will see that I am now an admin. So I have this extra section down here where I can add asset types. So let's go to that screen and see what we've got here. These icons may look familiar to you. These can be found on the main assets screen. So you'll see that the asset types correlate to this section up here, these filters. Right here we have a chair and a desk because we have the furniture tab selected. If we flip over to the technology, then we've got the projector, the laptops, right? So if we wanna add asset types, those will relate to those filters in the middle of our screen. So I can edit an asset type here if I wanna change the picture or change the name of the asset type, or I can add a new asset type. Let's add a new one for furniture. So I'm gonna add, instead of just chairs and desks, Right, if I, if I want to filter by furniture to see what I have, I have chairs and desks. And here we'll just call this teacher desk. Differentiate between students and teachers. This is a furniture. And we can add a picture as well if we want. I'll just go ahead and add another picture of a desk. And then we can submit this. Now we have two types of desks. And if we go back to our assets screen and we go back to furniture, you'll see that we now have a teacher desk category as well. And if we have no teacher desks yet, we can go ahead and add that right here. In order to add an asset, it's automatically gonna populate the asset type based on what we have selected from the previous screen. So here we can add in, I don't know, teacher, desk one, two, three, four. For the manufacturer, we can pick from the list of manufacturers already in the database, or if we don't see the one that we need, we can go ahead and add another manufacturer. So here we'll say teacher co. For the main POC, we can add a point of contact for that as well if we wish. And for the main business line, we'll just do 315-555-5555. Now we have Teacher Co. as the manufacturer. We can put in a model number. We can put in a link to the product documentation and we can add a total quantity of teacher desks. Let's say from Teacher Co. for model one, two, four, five, six, we have 10 of those desks ready to be assigned. We can add a picture here if we want, but let's just submit it. Once we submit that asset, it's gonna take the number of child items that we specified, we said that we have 10 items and it's gonna run a flow to start creating those child assets in the asset item table. Now for the teacher desk category, we have a teacher desk one, two, three, four. We've got, it says nine, but if we refresh and we go to assets, that last one just showed up right at the very end probably. So we have 10 total items and 10 are currently available and we can start assigning these to our teachers. So as you can see, very basic, but very useful tool for schools to start managing and keeping track of all of the assets that help the school run. In order to start using the asset management application, we first need to install the prerequisite solutions. There are two solutions that we need to import into our environment. The first one being Pragmatic Works UI components. The asset management app itself utilizes the UI components that we've built here at Pragmatic Works. So before we can even import the solution containing the asset management tool, we have to import the solution that contains those components. Let's take a look at how to do that. So first I'm gonna to go to make.powerapps.com. Secondly, I'm gonna make sure that I go to the correct environment where I need to install these UI components. For me, it routed me right to app in a snap. That is where my original asset management app lives. So in order to import a solution, we're gonna go all the way to the left and click on solutions. Then once we're in the solutions section of Power Apps, we'll go up to import solution. We'll browse out to our machine. And for me, I just have a folder called asset management solutions. And you want the one that's called the Pragmatic Works UI Components. 
Once you have that loaded in here, you're gonna click next. I'm gonna skip that since I already have the UI components in this environment, but that is step one. You have to import our UI components. The second step is once that's fully imported and you get the green banner at the top saying that it's imported and you're good to go, you'll go to import solution and you'll browse out again. And this time you'll bring in the asset management solution. You'll click open, you'll click next and you'll import that. Once that solution has been installed, you'll be able to click into the asset management solution and you'll see we have 16 total objects. So first, before we start using the application, let's go ahead and set up our admin policies for our app. What groups should be able to be admins in our app that can add asset types to the app as shown in the first video? So if you go over to environment variables, you'll see that there's actually a variable called asset admin group. So this asset admin group is tied to an Office 365 group that you can specify as the app maker. So if you go back to your solution and we go to apps, there's actually a little mini canvas app in here that we can use in order to pick the group that we want for our admins. So if we go, uh, the canvas app is called pick your admin group. So we'll go ahead and play this. Now you might get a little error up here. It's no worries, you can click off of that. Now you're gonna find the group on the left that contains your admins. For this, I'll go with Matt's app site. And so we've got Brian, Matt, Jonathan, and myself. And if I say, hey, those are the people that I want to be admins in this group, great, here's their ID right here. If you don't have a group that contains the people that you wish to be your admins, you may wanna go and create that group separately. But once we identify the group on the left, again, this is Office 365 groups, and we, we identify, okay, these are the members that we want to have access to the admin side of our app, we can go ahead and click this copy icon down here in the bottom right. That's gonna copy this unique identifier for that group. Then all I have to do is go back into my solution, go to environment variables, go into the asset admin group, and we're gonna add a new current value for this. So I'm gonna overwrite this value, whatever value's in there, go ahead and overwrite it, and then click save. Again, you wanna put that into the current value, not necessarily the default value. Now that we have added that as the admin group for this app, if I go back to apps and I go to asset management and I go to play, you'll now see that if I go to the hamburger menu, I have this add asset types. So again, let's just show that that works, show how it works. So if I go back to my environment variables, and let's remove that value. Now that I've removed that group, if I go back to the app and I do a hard refresh, I click on the hamburger menu, you'll see that as a regular standard user, that option to add as asset item types is officially gone. The next thing that you'll wanna do in order to start setting up and configuring the asset management tool is you'll wanna open up the app in edit mode. Now that we've got the app open in edit mode, let's take a look. There are a couple dead giveaways here that there are some things we need to configure. The first is up here at the top in this, in this header, we see your school asset management. So if we come over here, and we click on this control, let's go over to the right and see why that is the way that it is. So we go to the header, title, text, and we see your school asset management. Now we can just go ahead and get rid of the your school part, and we can say pragmatic works asset management or whatever we want it to say. The next thing to look at is the footer, and you'll see that, okay, we can replace the footer text with a variable. So there's a, something called the var footer text in the app on start. So let's go to the app, let's go to on start, and let's see what variables we're producing here. So here you'll see that there are our app menu items. That is our structure here for the menu. And we've got other things like the var background color, the primary color, and the accent color. We've got things like the app user. Again, I'll add a note here to do not change. 
And we've currently got this in dev mode. So what is dev mode? Remember, if you watch the other video on how to use the asset management app, then you might remember on this screen, let me get rid of this formula bar. If I go to the screen, oh, let me run the on start. Let's go to the scan an item screen. Remember, this simulate scan button is only here for testing purposes. Once I push this out and my users are using this on a tablet or a phone, we can go, you see right next to it, there's a label that says to hide this simulate button, set de var dev mode to false in the app on start. So let's go back to our app. Let's set the dev mode to false. Let's rerun the on start. And then you'll see that our simulate button is now gone. Perfect. We've got dev mode gone, but again, we didn't even do what we came here to do, which is to replace the var footer text in the app on start. So let's go down to where we set the var footer text and we'll just replace it here. PW asset management tool. Again, we'll rerun the on start. And now our footer text has changed throughout the app. The last thing to do as an administrator for this app is to add asset types. I also covered that in the first video on how to use the application, but since we're here, let's go through it one more time. So if we go up to play, we can filter by type. If we want to filter by furniture, and if we have one more type of furniture we wish to add, we can do that right here. We can name the asset type. So for this, I'll call it something maybe like bookshelf for the category. This would be under furniture and we can add a picture here. I'll just add any old picture. We'll go with Mitchell. Why not? Mitchell can be our bookshelf. So we'll submit that. And there we go. We go back to assets and we go to furniture. We'll see we have a category here for bookshelves. And that's really all there is to it in order to configure your asset management tool for use. Once you've got all that done, you can publish the application and invite your users to start tracking the assets in the organization. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you find the asset management tool useful.